Let's continue our discussion on implementation of k-means. By the end of this video, you will be able to build a clustering model using k-means. Explain methods to identify the right value of k. In the previous video, we did all the basic pre-processing. In this video, we will move on to the clustering phase. For this, we will import k-means class from the sklearn.cluster module. Then we will create an instance of a class again by the name of k means. Note that the instance is in lower case. Also note that we are assigning n underscore clusters equal to 2 for simplicity. And like we have done quite a few times now using sklearn, we will use the k means dot fit function and pass data 1 as the data. Note that there is no second parameter being passed in this function which is different to what we have been following so far. Can you recall why? This is because we are tackling an unsupervised learning algorithm and there is no target variable involved in this problem. Lastly, we are predicting the clusters using the kmeans.predict function and storing the results in variable pred. On viewing the results stored in the pred variable, we can see that it contains a list containing zeros and ones, which represent nothing but the clusters, as each row in the data represents a region. The predictions tell us that in which cluster the respective region lies in. If we want to look at the inertia metric of the k-means, we can use the k-means.inertia variable to see the result. As we can see, the inertia of clusters formed is 0.02. But how do we know if the number of clusters is equal to 2 is the right number of clusters? Well, we can find out by building the graph which we discussed in the previous topic, in which we had the number of clusters on the x-axis and the corresponding inertia score on the y-axis. For that, we will need to run the clustering algorithm several number of times and each time we will be incrementally increasing the number of clusters and recording the corresponding inertia scores. To do that, we will start by defining an empty list which will contain the inertia score or squared sum of errors whenever a clustering process is performed over the data. Next, we will run a loop which will work within the range of 1 to 10. This range simply represents the range of values we want to try for the process of clustering. Now inside the loop, we will start by creating an instance of the k-means class. Note that we must set the n underscore clusters parameter as i so that in every loop the number of clusters will increase incrementally. Once the instance is created, we will fit it over the data and store the corresponding inertia score in the empty SSE list we defined right before running the loop. After running this loop, we are defining a data frame which has two columns. One is cluster which contains the n underscore cluster values and the other column comprises of the list inertia values which we calculated using the loop. Now the next step is to visualize the results. On the x axis we have the column cluster of the data frame and on the y axis are the SSE values. Note that the marker here represents how the corresponding points will be represented. Here we are having O as the marker. So we will be having large O markers denoting the points. Let's run this cell. We can see the graph between inertia and the number of clusters. What do you think should be the ideal number of clusters? To be honest, there is no ideal answer, but it is quite apparent that decrease in the value of the inertia is clearly insignificant when the number of clusters is 4. But some may argue that the ideal number of clusters should be 3 or 2 in this case. In a broad sense, all three of them can be correct considering the exact nature of the given problem statement. But in this scenario, let's go with three. To visualize the three clusters, we will finally make the last clustering model consisting of the three clusters and fit it over the data. Lastly, we will generate predictions and then we will store these predictions as a new column in the data one, which we have been using for the clustering purposes for a while now. Now to observe these clusters can be tricky as there are several features involved, but what we can do is plot two features against each other at a time. And this would involve a lot of repetitive code. We will take the help of functions. For this, we will first define a function seg, where seg stands for segregator. This function takes three parameters, str underscore x, str underscore y and clusters. The parameters str underscore x and str underscore y represent the feature names from the data that we want to plot on the x and y axis respectively. 
clusters represent the number of clusters we have segregated the data into. This function finally returns two lists x and y containing n number of elements respectively, where each element contains points belonging to the corresponding cluster. For example, zeroth element of list x will contain all the points that belong to the cluster 0. The first element will contain all the points that belong to the cluster 1 and so on. List y can be defined in the same way. Now, once we have defined the segregator, we will shift our focus to the actual plotting function which we have named here as plot clusters. The function again takes the same parameters which we just discussed. Inside this function, we will call the seg function and pass all the parameter values that it requires. This function returns two lists, x and y. Now in the next part, we are defining a loop which will run n number of times, where n refers to the number of clusters. In each iteration, we will plot the points in the ith element of the list x on the x-axis and points in the ith element of the list y on the y-axis. In the same statement, we are also labeling the clusters. Lastly, we will define the other labels of the plot using the parameters. Now let's look at the plot between Indians and foreigners. For this, we will simply call the plot underscore clusters function which we have defined earlier. We will pass the respective column names and the number of clusters as 3 as our final cluster model contains 3 clusters. Looking at the graph itself, we can see the three clusters are blue, orange and green. But there is something very off about the clusters in this graph. If you look closely, there is a green point among the blue points. Can you guess how did this happen? Did k-means predict the clusters in the wrong manner? No, the cluster is made the normal way it should be. The green point is among the blue ones because there are also other features which are participating in the clustering process but we are unable to visualize them as we have made the plot between only two of the several features available in the data. Therefore, the green point among blue ones should be explained by the other feature dimensions which we are unable to visualize right now. Now let's try out another plot, this time between the Indian male and the foreigner's male. Again, we can see that there is a bit of overlapping between the orange and blue points which should be explainable by the other features. In this plot, we can also see a significant negative correlation between the Indian male and the foreigner's male data, which is expected considering the fact that as the foreigners increase in the area, the Indian population should naturally be lower. Let's explain the three clusters now. The orange cluster represents the regions where the Indian male are minimum in number, whereas the blue cluster represents the region where Indian males have a somewhat significant population. Lastly, the green cluster represents the region where the Indian male population is among the highest in the dataset. Similarly, you should be able to interpret the rest of the combination of features yourself. But let me ask you, could we have made any other features which could have explained the information in a better manner? Features like total male to female ratio, Indians to foreigner ratio, was normalizing the data along the columns the best way to bring the data to unit scale? What would have happened if we would have defined the features as the fraction of total population and then normalize the data? Well, these are some of the questions which I believe you would be able to answer during the module assignment. With this, we have come to an end of our fascinating journey of machine learning. Hope you had fun while learning and would be able to apply your practical knowledge to solve complex data problems. Next is the module test which will be followed by the final test. Please make sure to revise all the topics at least once before taking these tests. All the best.